I got a few other things I got to tell you. So as you guys know, that one of our goals is to create cinematic graphics in real time. When you take a look at movies today, when you take a look at movies today, uh, it's not just computer graphics, shaders, and geometry, and lighting, and shadows. In order to make the cinematic experience realistic, it has to obey the laws of physics. Before you render it, you have to simulate the world. Simulation, physics simulation, environmental simulation, and computer graphics rendering go hand in hand. In order, to in order to deliver that experience, in order to create the type of imagers that you see, supercomputers are used to simulate the physics of the environment, and then using the same clusters, massive supercomputers, they render each and every pixel slowly and meticulously so that it generates these beautiful cinematic imageries. Well, we've been challenged to try to make this in real time for quite a long time. And one of the things that inspires us is to create this experience so that you can enjoy it in an interactive video game. And that is the soul, that's the reason why we created the NVIDIA GameWorks Studio. Over the last, oh, coming up on 10 years, we've dedicated some 500 engineering years to create the world's most advanced real-time special effects engine. It basically broken down into three major categories. The first category, of course, is simulation. Excuse me, rendering. That's about lighting. Everything looked backwards from up here, just so you know. It's about lighting, it's about shadows, volumetric lighting, advanced lighting techniques, and shadows, all kinds of interesting shadow effects, because as you guys know, rendering shadows is really complicated. And without shadows, you simply don't have that sensation, that, that feeling that it looks real. Soft shadows, contact hardening shadows, self-casting shadows, your hair casts shadows on all the other strands of hair. When you look at grass, grass is rendering. Not only is it, is it green and it's waving in the wind, it's also casting shadows on itself. We also want to create the sense of photorealism using a technique called global illumination. With Pascal, we introduced the idea of simultaneous multi-projection, the ability to render into every single direction, six different directions at the same time. That ability allows us to create a type of global illumination effect acceleration called voxel-based GI, VXGI. We also use that technique for voxel-based ambient occlusion. All of those advanced rendering techniques are embodied inside our rendering engine. We also created the world's most advanced real-time simulation engine. They're particle systems, they're fluid systems, systems that allows you to simulate rigid bodies, simulation engines that allows you to simulate cloth, hair, turf. And all of those techniques, as you can see, unifies both the simulation, the physics simulation of it, as well as the rendering part of it. We combined it into one single engine so that we can create these type of special effects that you guys see in cinematic films. The amount of computation necessary to do so is really quite extraordinary. In fact, it's a supercomputing problem. And that's one of the reasons why these film studios use large clusters of supercomputers to render the film. It is the single most expensive thing they do. It takes hours to render each frame, and it takes solid years in order to create the entire film. Animating it, rendering it, simulating it, making it look beautiful, of course, and of course, making, telling the story is incredibly computationally intensive. And now we're going to take the whole thing into VR. Well, when you go into virtual reality, you want a sense that everything is behaving according to the laws of physics. When you touch something, there should be sense of collision detection. When you use water, you should see that it's spewing and flowing and adhering, if necessary, if, if appropriate, to uh, different surfaces. Smoke should behave like smoke. Fire should behave like fire. In order to put all of that into VR, an enormous amount of computation is necessary. Well, we've been developing this engine now for quite a long time. It's been incorporated into major game engines all over the world. Today, we're announcing something really, really important. This body of work representing 500 engineering years in our company today is available, all of it, in DX12. DX12 gives us the opportunity to put this engine in the hands of developers all over the world, and it'll, it'll run on any platform that is DX12 compatible. If it has a 
credible DX12 system, this engine will now run on it. By unifying rendering simulation in VR and putting it on every DX12 platform, we hope that we can lift and we hope that we can inspire future games like you've never seen before. So today, we're announcing the NVIDIA GameWorks library and engines will be available on DX12. I want to thank all the engineers that worked so hard to make this possible. Thank you. <laughs> we also introduced two updates. As you saw earlier in the cinematic movie, uh, cinematic images, rendering water is really, really hard. Water is made up of a whole bunch of molecules. Molecules interact with each other. Sometimes it's more viscous, sometimes it's more liquid. It flows, it interacts with objects, things boil on top of it. And as you know, water is really, really beautiful. And it's very hard to do. The technique used for doing that it's called smooth particle hydrodynamics. Basically, every single molecule, depending on the size that we choose, and the size that we choose would allow you to enjoy it more realistically or otherwise, the size that we choose would interact with all of the other water molecules around it. And it sloshes around, things float on top of it, and heavy things will sink to the bottom, and light things will float on top. And every time you use it, if you simulate it properly, your video game comes alive. You basically have a pool of water in front of you. For viscous liquids, it's a great algorithm. And it's the same algorithm that you see people use in films. For expanding gases, we use a slightly different algorithm. There we use an adaptive, sparse voxel grid in order to simulate the smoke or flames. And each one of these little voxels will contain some fuel. And that fuel, the voxel would be moving in a particular direction. There might be some pressure element associated with it, whether the the, uh, the gas is expanding very quickly. Maybe it's fire, maybe it's smoke. There's a shadow element associated with that voxel. As you can see, these are very complicated algorithms that we now have to simulate in order to deliver a real-time experience in completely in real time, simulate the physics, and then rendering it beautifully so that we can enjoy it while we interact with all the characters and the environment around us. And so why don't we take a look at that? The first one that we'll look at is smooth particle hydrodynamics. And, um, well, let's see. This is all completely in real time, you guys, and it's just running in DX12 and is running on top of one of our GPUs, our Pascal GPUs. And every time you enjoy it, it's a little different. You, can, you know, you could drop whatever you want into it. And if it's heavy, it sinks to the bottom. If it's soft, it floats to the top. It could be foamy. It could be made of wood. It could be made of plastic. Wait, wait till he cues you. We could squirt more water into it. Mm -hmm. And after we simulate it using a supercomputing algorithm called SPH, we can then render it. Switch. And look how beautiful it is. Ah. Open it up. And we let it out. OK? All right, so first, SPH, fluid simulation, liquid simulation. Now let's take a look at smoke. Well, smoke is hard. Now what you're looking at here is, is our um, voxel grid, adaptive voxel grid simulator. And this is a fire that is inside an Unreal Engine. And notice the fire is um, hot on the bottom, and it turns into smoke. Uh, some of the things that you're looking at with the smoke is really quite exciting. It's never been done before. This is smoke that's doing self-shadowing. And that's why when the smoke goes up, it just doesn't turn gray, but you could see the soft shadows. And it just you know, it even makes, makes smoke look beautiful. And because everything is completely real time, it's interacting with the environment. And and uh, you can see that it's lighting properly in, the, in, this, in this factory. Um, in fact, the, the, fire, the fire is a living, breathing fire. And so you would expect that if you were to, um, well, throw something at it, 
Look at that. I could do that all day. That's a whole game all by itself. And notice, notice these gigantic bullets. Um, when it hits that plate in the back, it collides and it behaves according to the laws of physics. And we can make that giant plate heavy and so that it's harder to make it move or we can make it lighter so that it moves more easily. And everything is all lit properly. And the material that is on top of it looks like real wonderfully beautifully shaded material. And the fire uh, is completely interacting with it. And so why don't we shoot one more into it and let's do a bullet time or something. What do you guys think about that? That's great, guys. Good job. Good job. We could be here all night. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're announcing the world's new screensaver. <laughs> Beautiful screensaver. Yeah, you want that, right? Isn't that amazing? That's incredible. That's incredible. That's ab absolutely incredible. This is where, this is where supercomputing, supercomputing meets computer graphics. Supercomputing meets computer graphics. Now, the thing that's, that, that's really, really quite special, and the reason why it's taken us so long to make this possible, is because the GPU now has to do simulation a little bit, computer graphics a little bit, simulation a little bit, computer graphics a little bit, and we now have to unify rendering and simulation into one application. This is now running on top of DX12, and DX12 running on top of a Pascal GPU using the DX12 architecture of asynchronous compute allows us to now interleave computer graphics and computation into one workload. As a result, we can do rendering, and all of the work that we've done with advanced rendering and all of the work that we've done with physics simulation can now come together on top of one engine, and we can deliver this result and this effect all completely through DX12 on, in this case, what you saw earlier was Unreal Engine 4. All of this has now been put in place so that game developers can take advantage of it. This is just a giant leap for interactive graphics. This is a giant leap for video games. And today, we're putting it all together and releasing it into the world called GameWorks DX12 running on top of DX12 GPUs. First announcement.